All right, we have Bailey, one-year-old Bernice Mountain Dog. Theo, go away. Go, get out of here, Theo. Oh. This is going to be her first session doing e-collar conditioning, which means <clears throat> I'm going to be teaching her what that strange sensation around the neck means and how to respond to it. She already knows recall. Been working on that the last, uh, I don't know, 16, 24 hours since she got here. So I'm going to be using the recall to teach her what the e-collar means. The way it's going to work is she's going to get low level e-collar pressure at a level that she barely perceives. A little gentle tickle around the neck. That's going to come on first. You'll hear it on the sound box when I'm tapping on the remote. As I'm tapping or while I'm tapping, I will call her to me and I will continue to tap through it while I call. The moment she turns and takes a step towards me, and I have conviction that she's committed to come. So if you were holding the camera right now, and my back was turned to me, and you said, Nick, come. Boom. That's what I want. And when I get that, I'm going to relax all the pressure. Okay? So it's going to be pressure on, pressure off. And she's going to learn through repetition how to respond to the pressure of the electronic collar. It's just a tactile cue. Nothing more, nothing less. It means move towards me. Just as if I were to, Bailey, come. Good. Give a jet. Good curl. Yes. Give a gentle tug on the lead. Right. Same thing. That's just physical pressure around the collar. The e collar is going to represent the exact same thing. Good. Bailey, come. Yes. Good girl. Good. Excellent. Now you saw her flinching a little bit there. That means the collar is on a setting that's a little bit too high. I think that she perceives it around a six to an eight. I'm going to a seven. We're going to try that again. Good girl. And I'm going to take my time in between reps. I don't want to drill the dog over and over and over again because if you do things like that, when the dog goes out, I'm sorry, the dog will stop going out because they know that you're just going to call them back. The whole point of effective, proper e-collar training, at least how you start it, is to teach the dog to move towards you. So if you're just drilling your dog rep after rep after rep, even on low levels, they're just going to kind of start gravitating around you and you won't have the distance you need to work with the dog. So hopefully you can hear the sound box there. You should hear me tapping on the remote. It should make like a little audible each time I tap. Good. Excellent. <clears throat> now she is to stay here until I say, okay. And I'll move and let her go back out. I'm actually going to drop the lead and let it drag because she doesn't need much leash pressure at all. She's pretty good with the verbal. The less leash pressure I can use for this, the better. Because I want her understanding and perceiving that strange foreign sensation around the neck, which is the e-collar. Good girl. Good. What's that, sweetheart? Good. Yes, good girl. Good. Now again, a little twitchy. You saw that twitch there? Hopefully I didn't block it. With my body, you saw the little twitch, a little bit too much. So I'm going down to a six. Good girl. Good job. Okay. All right, sweetheart. Good. 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 And we take our time with this. I'll kind of move around a little bit. I'll take some time in between repetitions to let her know it's okay to go back out and rebuild that distance. If I'm having trouble building distance, I can simply throw some food and let her go to it. Good girl. Bailey, come. Yes, good girl. Good job, sweetie. Good girl. Excellent. Good. Let her go back out. Let her do her thing. Good girl. Bailey, come. Yes, good. Good girl. Good sweetheart. I love introducing the collar with positive reinforcement, ideally with food. Praise and affection is good, but food is a primary reinforcer. Dogs don't, you know, give each other praise. They don't say, good girl, good boy. You know, they might, like, give some affection. You know, they kind of physically touch each other. You see the puppies in the litter. They're always making constant contact and constant touch. But the food is the primary reinforcer. They need it to live. So it's a big asset to the dog, and it's a big asset for the training. Okay, sweetheart, come on, let's go. Good girl. Good girl. 
Also, you will see me backing away from the dog. Okay, so the moment I get that head to turn and she takes that first step towards me, and also coinciding with when I stop pressing the button, you'll see me backpedaling a little bit. This is very important. Dogs have prey drive, which means they want to bite and chase and kill things. They're predators. So if I back away from the dog after I call the dog, it helps draw her all the way into me. It helps her finish the rep, right? There's a big difference between her thinking that that particular spot on the ground was just a little bit hot because of the collar, as opposed to her understanding that I'm trying to tell her to come all the way into me. Come here, getting to me is what turned off the pressure, right? So it's very important that you give your dog as much help and assistance as possible when you introduce the collar to them. When you introduce any type of pressure-based training, to be honest. Good girl, okay, come on, let's go. Good girl, good. Good. Good, sweetheart. Good job. Now you see there's still a bunch of kibble on the ground over there that she was able, that she didn't finish getting. She was midway through eating all that stuff up and she's still coming to me the moment I call her. Okay, I don't know if she would do that with my verbal cue alone. She's only been here like a little bit less than a day. We haven't really done that much recall. She knows it, she understands it, right? Maybe the collar is adding that extra bit of motivation that I need. It's too early to tell. We just started this. It's our first session on an electronic collar. Okay, sweetheart, come here. Good girl. Good girl. Oh. Oh. Good yes, good girl. Good. Now there, you saw she wasn't too far from me. She was only a few feet ahead of me. No big deal. If the dog won't give you much distance to begin with, you work with whatever, whatever they'll give you. I mean, I could, theoretically, I could start right in front of her and I could just start tapping and back away and call her to me. You're going to see me go farther out now. And maybe take her over to the grass a little bit, try and get her sniffing. Maybe have her come back this way. <laughs> and she's hungry, right? She hasn't eaten much. Bailey, come. Yes, good girl. Good. Good job. So that's, that can work against you if the dog is too food motivated and they know you have food on you. They just kind of get glued to you because they know they're training a little bit. They know something's going on. So you have to be selective in how you use food. But again, it's her first e-collar session and I'm going to make this as positive and fun and easy for her as possible. Also, very important. You see the dog's body language, right? It hasn't changed one bit since we began doing this. There's no confusion because we're working on very low levels. Bailey, come. Yes, good girl. Good. If your dog is looking whacked out, if the tail's tucked, you know, if, if they're jerking around, getting real flinchy, you're doing something wrong, either with your mechanics, your technique, the way you're using your voice, you might be on too high of a level. Okay, we call this the perception level where we introduce this thing. It is low enough where it's not aversive in any manner whatsoever, but it's high enough that the dog can feel it and perceive the sensation. The point I'm gonna to try to get to with her in this lesson so up until now, I've been tapping and calling her with my voice. The point I want to get to in this lesson is to be able to just tap, tap, tap on the remote and have her respond to it. That will tell me, or at least give me a good cue, that she is beginning to perceive and understand what the remote means in isolation. And that is what I need before I can move to the next step. I need her to understand that when you feel this tapping on your neck, almost like I'm behind you at Starbucks in the line, I'm like, hey, hurry up. Right, you gotta respond to me, you gotta answer the call. I need her to understand how to answer the call before I go to step two, okay? So this is also known as escape training. She's learning how to escape the e-collar pressure by responding to my voice. Okay, come here, sweetheart, girl. Yes, good girl, good. Excellent, good. Now, we're gonna try one with a little more distance and I'm gonna drop a big pile of food on the ground. And she's preempting me a little bit, see? So you can get some false positives. You never really know. Good. All right, come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, good girl. Good. Good job.
Good mama. Good mama. Good. Excellent. Good girl. Okay, come on, let's go. Now, I'm going to try and see if I can fool her by acting like I'm going to send her back to the crate. Okay. Bailey, come. Good, yes. Excellent. Now, on that one, I added my voice back in because I started tapping. She didn't turn right away. Right, and keep in mind, I've only done like maybe 10, 12 repetitions with her on this, okay? I'm not expecting to be able to get to the point by the end of this lesson where I can just tap, 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 and she turns and responds without needing my voice, okay? But sometimes you can gamble a little bit, and you can see some dogs will pick it up more quickly than others. We'll do one or two more sessions just like this today in different parts of the yard, maybe on one of our normal training walks, and we'll see if we can get there. Once I get to that point, I can start moving to the avoidance phase, which is critical before getting her off leash. Good girl. Okay, come on. So what you'll see me doing is I'll start mixing the two different types or the variations together. I'll do some where I start tapping and I call her with my voice, and I'll do some where I just start tapping. And on those where I just kind of tap without my voice, I will sometimes use gentle amounts of leash pressure. That's another key concept with good quality electronic collar training, is you are teaching the dog that this and this are the same thing. This one is just wireless, okay? And that's why you always want to try to be pairing the lead with the remote. That lets you fade the lead out of the picture at a future time, which is how you get to true off-leash obedience. Girl, good job. Nice. Gio, come. I don't know what he's doing going across the street like that. So hopefully you were able to see that last rep that I did with her. And hopefully you were able to hear it on the sound box. Is it turned on? Yeah, it is. So I started tapping. Her head turned. She took a step towards me. I back away while uh, laying off the taps. I yes her, and she gets fed at my feet. All right, so that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to stop the session right there. We're going to go for another training walk in a little bit here. And then we're going to come back and do this exact same thing, maybe in the driveway for the first few reps, then maybe into the grass where there's more smells, right? I want to do this while she's sniffing. You want to start generalizing things quickly. Dogs do not generalize well. So just because I taught her this in the driveway right here, in this particular moment, does not mean that she's going to understand it when we go to different parts of the yard different parts of the neighborhood. She's already done it once, so she'll pick it up quickly as soon as we restart in a different area, right? But you kind of have to generalize things and show the dog all these different pictures. 